Why do I think Terrence Malick's Night of Cups is a great movie? Let me help you understand it and argue that this is quite a good movie. It deserves to be watched, rewatched, and studied coming up next. <laughs> Alright, to my surprise, Knight of Cups has a 5.7 out of 10 rating on imdb.com. So I'm arguing against the masses, the great group of raiders who do not like this movie. People like Terrence Malick's other earlier movies that are hard to understand, expressionistic. It's like, say, Tree of Life, which has a much better score online. I find this movie a little bit more relatable than Tree of Life. In fact, it does have a framing structure, which is Pilgrim's Progress. And perhaps that's part of the problem is that most people coming to this movie don't even know what the heck Pilgrim's Progress is, which is one of the best-selling books ever at one point in time, in the 19th century at least. It was the second best-selling book ever behind the Bible. And John Bunyan wrote The Pilgrim's Progress as an allegorical tale about a pilgrim wandering through the world. It is a Christian allegory. And it comes up here at the very beginning of the movie. The pilgrim's progress from this world to that which is to come, delivered under the similitude of a dream. And the movie is structured by this wandering character, the Christian Bale figure, throughout this world, lost in an L.A. Hollywood landscape only to be, of course, as a Ter Terrence Malick movie, found or saved by the end of the movie. And who would have thought of combining Pilgrim's Progress by Bunyan with tarot cards? Not me, not anybody I would have known. I think this movie demands to be watched twice at least, and at least you should try it twice. The first time I tried to watch it, I did turn it off after 50 minutes. I was not in the mood for it. The second time, and subsequent times I've watched it, it's revealed itself to me as one, first of all, it's an L.A. Hollywood movie. And there's a lot of movies about the Hollywood movie industry. And this one deliberately sets out to say the main character is tempted by money and women in particular. And he's going to go through a series of women, I think six or seven different women, who he wanders in and out of their lives and is either their lover or their seducer, or in the case of the Kate Blanchett character, his wife and he can't settle on any particular woman and all of these women since it's the pilgrim's progress tale are perhaps allegorical you have the married noble woman played by natalie portman you have the uh, fantasy woman at the i think it's a las vegas strip club you have the kate blanchett character this little noble nurse sort of woman who is honorable you have the young starlets in this movie and the christian bale character is essentially an actor who is being tempted by money and success and fame but he's wandering around as you can see lost in this world he doesn't have good family relations he doesn't have anyone in his life who he can identify with he hasn't developed his life at all in terms of his relationships and thus that metaphor of being lost is really important in this movie. At once the city of LA is seductive and attractive, vast, wealthy, and beautiful and it's also the converse of all those at exactly the same time. As this pilgrim wanders through the world he encounters a number of different philosophies, ways to live life, and beliefs to live your life by. At one point, there's the Antonio Banderas character, I think it's supposed to be a famous actor, says, there are no principles, just circumstances. So no moral principles, no universal laws. There's just moments that you enter into and morality, perhaps there is no morality, perhaps morality comes only from you know, your, your brief interactions with and what you can get out of other people. Thus, this main character is seduced, obviously, this is a Hollywood movie, by pleasure, above all, parting, scenes of parting, scenes of vast wealth, and of course, women. And yet, this movie says that's entirely dissatisfying to this character who keeps wandering into deserts, wandering into family situations. He can't ever, you know, reconcile with his family and get along with his father all the way. His brother seems to be lost. And of course, as an LA movie, you're going to see homeless people, destitute people throughout the city. The dichotomy of this actor's, you know, wealthy parting lifestyle. With that, the question for the Pilgrim is, in Pilgrim's Progress in this movie, why am I not that homeless, sick person on the street? Why am I me? Should I really revel in my luxuries? Should I, you know, seduce women and just have a good fun time? Is life all about just pleasure? One of the philosophies he could live by. Another is announced later in the movie when the priest character, maybe it's an Anglican or Catholic priest, announces to him, 
this is a life of suffering and God is being close to you. I think the priest is quoting Job or alluding to Job, for example, here. God is creating suffering for you or is allowing, better word, suffering for you so that you can understand what he is and to become closer to him. Characters are supposed to be generic types. You have the wanderer, the pilgrim, the Christian Bale character, who I should say almost says nothing in the movie. It's very unusual to have a main character say next to nothing. I counted in a, I counted three lines that he actually says. I think it would have been neater, in fact, to have him say nothing. Now, except for the voiceover, what I'm saying is he says nothing to other characters in dialogue. And it would have been neat to have him say absolutely nothing, but Malik chooses a very famous movie star who has a great voice and can shift voices however you want and takes him and, you know, takes the voice out of him, as it were, in the Christian Bale character. You have his father, played by Brian Dennehy, who seems to be a man of faith or of more faith. He has this voiceover where he tells his son to go seek the pearl. The pearl of great price is perhaps what he's referring to. There may be some other myth or legend going on here. And so this main character has the father's philosophy to seek wisdom, the pearl, which comes out of the book of Proverbs and is written, the book of Proverbs written from a father to a son, and the voiceover narrator, the Brian Dennehy character, sort of whispers that into his son's ear. Seek wisdom, seek pearls, seek the truth, and the pilgrim thus has to, is a conflict between seeking after Hollywood and, and pleasure, seeking after fame, or seeking after, say, nothing except for things that are good for himself, or going with the father. Malik movies very typically describe these sort of pilgrim, lost pilgrim figures as wanderers between their origin and their destination. You can put that in spiritual terms and say the origin was actually literally the beginning of the world. Genesis 1, chapter 1, verse 1, in which God created the world. That's the origin. That's where you came from. Where are you going to? The new Jerusalem, the new heavens, and the earth. Tree of Life definitely depicts all of that. But you get serious hints of that here. And the motif of Genesis chapter 1 comes up over and over again. As this character, as the wanderer, is literally between the sky and the ocean, which according to Genesis chapter 1, two bodies of water. In, in Genesis 1, God separates the heavens from the earth, the waters above from the waters below. And oftentimes in this movie, you get floating things and flying things sort of brought together. The sky is a water, a, you know, body of water. There's bodies of water down there. And in terms of evolution, the theory of evolution, with it, which I think Malik believes in as well, we come from the water. We were uh, water creatures before we made it onto land. And that's the idea of bringing those two things together, origins, where you were originated from. You were between that position and then the new heavens and the new earth, which are so often in Malik depicted as beach scenes, the meeting of water and land. Very important for film history. Look at my Bergman videos. I talk about this a lot where the fluid you know, water meets up with the stable land. And that also is about moving onward and beaches, of course, are very pleasant. They're images of paradise, perhaps. And so this, all the beach scenes in this, for the pilgrim, foretell what he could have, a better world. The beach at the end of the tree of life, where the resurrected souls, I think, come back and sort of meet each other after their death, and now they're renewed, they have new life. And these beach scenes in the Knight of Cups hint at that very thing, the possibility of resurrection, of one day coming back and having a second body. And that's ultimately what I think the Pilgrim wants. Not the fantasy land of Las Vegas, these artificial simulations, although they themselves can be beautiful as Malik's cinematography shows, and they also hint at ultimate pleasure as a good in and of itself. Now, not the sinful pleasure that Malik probably is thinking of here with Las Vegas, but some greater pleasure. And note that everything in this movie is absolutely stunning. The film itself, the style itself, is showcasing the abundance, the generativity, as you might say, of creation itself. Stemming from Genesis 1, but also this character is an actor who can create goodness or, cre or destroy things. And that's always the choice here for the wanderer. 
creation or destruction, which you're going to choose. Thus, you often see the character lost in desert landscapes, another image of pilgrimage between states. For the Old Testament, you know, it's from Egypt to Jerusalem, the promised land, and in between is the vast desert you must cross and God must give you manna, that is the Hebrews, in order to survive the trip to the promised land. And the pilgrim goes out to the desert here, the Christian Bale character, several times and is wandering around lost, sad, and mournful. And he's there right before the ending section, which is called, I think, Rebirth or Resurrection. I'm telling you, you have to think of this movie in terms then of Pilgrim's Progress, the tarot, and several biblical tropes from or tropes in the Bible in order to sort of even get what this movie is hinting at. Plus, you should know some L.A. movies and some L.A. Hollywood movies. You need to know Antonioni, who is being quoted here, over and over again, I think is who, is who you know Malik finds as an inspiration all over the place. And then Malik's own other work, I think the New World and the Tree of Life in particular are going to be helpful to anybody who wants to sort of look at this movie and understand it. But if you're familiar with any of those things and you come to this movie and you love great cinematography and even better for Malik, he's amazing with sound, sounds, sound effects and music. You will definitely appreciate this movie. It does not deserve 5.7 out of 10. I think people trying to watch this movie as entertainment aren't going to get much out of it. But to me, to get away from the madness of the world and sort of re-envision the world the way Malik wants me to see it, he makes me see everything anew, including L.A. strip clubs, including the desert, including Los Angeles, including Hollywood parties depicted here in this movie. This is a wonderful movie to watch and sort of be absorbed in the awesomeness of Malik's movie making expertise and then to sort of see it as a lost pilgrim movie I think if you watch it that way you will get something out of it perhaps even a lot out of it so that should start you with this movie what do you think about this movie what do you think about Malik anything that I said please let us know in the comments and please subscribe to this channel for more great content thank you have a great day